Thank you very much, Riv. And you said it got to that point after TSM got a hold of that game. So I'm going to go over the replay where TSM got back into the game. Set the stage here for a second as we pull that up. Renegades, what ended up happening is they won a team fight near the mid lane. Now they decide it's time to go do that Baron to make sure that they are able to secure more of a lead for themselves. But what's going to happen here is Crumbs, he actually got tagged by a Sentinel coming into the pit. So despite Double If not doing any damage to him, he's still going to set up the first kill and the quadra kill that goes over. But because Crumbs dies, that means the rest of Renegades, no smite, have to commit more damage to the Baron so they aren't able to focus on Hauntzer and clean up this fight as it's happening. As we roll this clip out, you'll be able to see, though, Alex Each and Freeze, they have flashes here. So instead of going to the back of the pit, and trying to retreat, they feel like they can actually make a difference in this fight as they come forward. But Bjergsen is finally in this fight, and Bjergsen is going to throw down his E onto Flares and send a Glitter Lance this way across Freeze. It's going to do a huge burst of damage that he is not expecting, or else he would have retreated from this fight. And that's going to put him off on the side. Alex will then fl uh, flash afterwards, so those are two flashes that could have prevented a lot of damage used a little too late. But they were not expecting the burst that's going to come through here as we roll this clip out and you see Double Lift clean up this fight. Boom! Right there, so much damage onto Freeze and Alex each with the Thunderlords coming down, and that's going to be the cleanup there. And also Bjergsen whimsies flares so that there's no possibility of the fight getting turned back around by that Fed Rise. So TSM, once they got a hold of that game, it was still a lot of back and forth. It was another victory for them that was kind of drawn out, but they can be happy about that 2-0. But now let's check in with Dash, who's got some of those guys with him on the desk. Thank you very much, Irene. That's right. I'm here with Sven Skarin and Doublelift after that victory, bringing you to a 2-0 weekend. So that's got to feel good. However, neither game the cleanest that it probably could have been. So I'm coming to you first, Doublelift. You guys did secure the 2-0, which puts you in a nice position at 5-3 and record-wise. But how does the team feel? How do you guys feel about the victories that you're picking up and where you still need to go? Uh, I don't think anyone feels happy about the victories because... It's kind of one of those things where it's expected that you win. It's all about like the matter in which you win. And like both of our games yesterday and today were really bad. I mean, the, not only should the games not have gone so, super long, but um, they're just like playing the game. It's super chaotic. And we don't really control the game how a, a better team should. So, I mean, either time we could have lost. And that's like super scary to think of, you know, getting upset and especially in the regular split. Uh, those are wins that you should be picking up if you want to like secure the top two seed. and. Yeah, it just feels really bad. I mean, we have a lot of work to do. Right. Team's not there yet. Still work to do. So, Sven, if you had to pinpoint areas of weakness for the team when we talk about either miscommunication or struggles in the early or late, what do you identify as one of the big problem areas for TSM currently? Uh, probably our mid-game. It feels like we have no... Uh, I mean, we just need to work on where we need to be in the map and how we set up the vision and how we punish the enemy for having no vision and stuff like this. So, yeah, probably mostly the mid-game. Now, how do you feel the jungle role in particular fits into that uh, uh, in this season? We've seen people play aggressive junglers, Nidalee, Kindred, Nunu, and be in enemy jungles. We've seen more farm-heavy stuff, Rek'Sai, uh, you know, just power farm. We've seen at least pressure early junglers. So is there a particular type of uh, champion or playstyle that you think uh, nets the best results currently? Uh, right now, it's stuff like Nidalee and Graves because... When you have the tracker's knife, or you don't even need it, you have your trinket, so you just walk into the enemy jungle, clear the camps, and put wards deep, so you will see when the enemy jungler is there. So stuff that can fight the enemy jungler, level uh, one, level three, and stuff like this is really so good right now. farm denial plus deep vision, securing that, and being able to apply pressure there on the map. Uh, double it back over to you. I just want to get your response. Uh, there were some... Uh, there was no shortage of words thrown around. Uh, Freeze going into the matchup was looking for the 2v2, was uh, very confident in his ability to play up against you and Yellowstar. Now, they did have a pretty successful 2v2 lane early on, that Draven picking up a couple early kills. Wanted to get your thoughts on the mat matchup and your response to some people saying that perhaps you're past your prime. I would say that the 13 kills you secured there being the season high for a single player in a single game this year speaks otherwise but your response uh i'm definitely i don't feel like i'm performing super well um i like made a really stupid mistake and ended up dying when i shouldn't have but that game was really weird uh well i guess i can outline lane from like two different things well, number one uh our jungler was top where nidalee was bottom the right. whole game 
and we absorbed the ganks and didn't die. And number two, there's this really weird bug in the bottom lane. I don't like bringing this over the analysis, but like one of the reasons why we got pressured super hard early is because two of their minions died and none of our minions died. So when they walked in lane, they got level two instantly, where we just had to get zoned. Uh, so that really sucked. Hopefully that gets fixed at some point. But past that, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I played really bad. Uh, 13 kills doesn't mean anything to me because I got hit by Orioles with flash up. It's just, I don't know why, it's super hard for me to focus right now. Um, usually I'd never get hit by Orioles with flash up, so I think I could have helped our team close out the game much sooner if I played better. Well, as many mistakes as there were, there are also moments of brilliance. I mean, picking up those that quadra kill wasn't, you know, that's, that's a sign of success to some degree. You guys pulling the trigger when you needed to around that Baron play. Back over to you, Sven. Looking ahead for TSM, We've already talked about areas in which you guys want to improve, but I'm curious to know what the identity of this team is, even if it's even been decided yet. So uh, has there been discussion around what is the play style of TSM? How are people going to be referring to you guys? Is it of the old focus mid lane, get that fed and win through there? Is it, you know, objective style focus games? Is it being incredible in lane swaps? Like where would you identify TSM's greatest strengths and what you guys are driving towards? Uh, I mean... It's kind of hard not to focus around mid or like bot because we have players like Doublelift and Bjergsen, so it's like kind of hard, yeah, not to focus them. But uh, what we've been trying to practice on is mostly objective focus. So if there's a tower, we should go for the tower, not the kills, stuff like this. Yeah. And what? So what would you say is the biggest challenge then uh, within the team to achieving that identity? I know we said mid game is something that we need to work on in terms of something that's actually within the game. But what is exactly holding you guys back from being able to establish the focus to the right people or supporting the carry for that individual game? Oh wow, it's such a team game. I mean, we at first I think everyone had uh, these certain expectations of each other because. When you know when you first join a team, all you really know about each other is uh, kind of like the hearsay and like just you know when I play with Bjergsen, I'm like oh Bjergsen, you know he's he's the carry, he's he's a mid lane carry, and then um, so we're trying to like we try to break those, down those identities and also we put a lot of risk guess, responsibility on Yellowstar to tell everyone what to do and micromanage because he's he's known as like the shot caller, and I think because of these expectations, it's like it's just really hard for us to function as a team because you kind of Oh, you expect somebody else to do this this thing, like, and then it's all up in the air. So, I don't know. Like, everything's kind of there's like so many aspects of the game that somebody needs to take control of. But for us, uh, I guess we haven't assigned those responsibilities yet. Well, you know, five and three ultimately is your record, so it's nothing to sneeze at. You guys are in a very good position, you know, when it comes to the the rankings and the ladder right now. However, there are some areas to clean up. Again, I want to congratulate you guys on your 2-0 week, moving you to five and three, and thank you for the interview. Now, we're headed into game four right after the break, where Team Impulse is going to uh, go up against Counter Logic Gaming, so don't go anywhere.